In this video, I'm going to show how to take Excel data and summarize it in a pivot chart. So in this example, we have what are called work orders and some work order numbers and the dates they were received. What we need to do is find out how many work orders come in every month. Okay? So I'm going to click simply select my data and this data set will grow over time, so I'm going to select all of column C and all of column D. Okay. I'm going to go to the Insert ribbon. Under Pivot Table, I'm just going to click Pivot Table. Okay. I'm going to put it in a new worksheet okay. and just click OK. And now Excel has made me a new worksheet. Here it's called Sheet 1. And here are my fields. Okay. The field that I want to count are the number of work orders, so I'm going to drag that into the values. Okay. And then the received, that's the date that they came in. So now we see something that looks very much like um, just a summary of all those dates. But I want to look at them by month. So if I right click on any of the dates in column A, I have the option to group. I'm going to select group. Months is already selected. I'm going to hold down the control key and also choose years. And I'll click OK. Okay. So now we see the data laid out in months and years. Okay. I would like to see this in a chart. Okay. So I'm going to simply go to the insert and I'm going to get a line chart for this and this is fine. I don't want a stacked line, I just want a regular line with marker chart. And I say, oh, okay, well this is everything, but it's still difficult. I want to see year over year. I want to compare month to month. So if I come back over here to my filters and my fields, I can grab years and move it over to the legend field. Now you can see that I'm getting my data separated by month and year with just a few short clicks. Okay. Now if I only need recent data, maybe I don't want to go all the way back to 2007. I only want 2010, 11, and 12. I could filter my data or something like that, but I can also filter right here. If I click the drop-down label okay, for the rows, I see all of the months. Okay. And if I click the drop down label for the columns, I see all of the years. So I'm going to deselect anything that's before 2007, and I'm just looking at the last three years 10, 11, and 12. And I'll click OK, and now you'll see that our chart shows that. I'm going to close the field list, we don't need that anymore, and now this behaves just like a regular chart. So if I would like to change some of the formatting, I can go to the pivot tools up here, okay. go to my chart layout. Perhaps I want to change it to have a data table with the legend key and get rid of the regular legend. Perhaps I want to add a title area. The other thing that we can do is standardize the size. So as you click the chart, if you go to Format, you'll see the size of the chart. And I'm going to say I want it 4.5 inches tall by 6.5 inches wide. Because I know that I want to display two charts on one page, um, on regular portrait page. So I'm going to add another worksheet here and actually come and copy this chart select and copy and I'll go to this other page and I'll paste. Then when I go through the process again with my other pivot table I can format that chart and I can paste it onto the same page here and print this page. So I can review year over year data for two different things. Okay, So this is how we went from this long list of data to something that we can actually use. So what do we do when our data is appended? This data is going to continue to grow throughout 2012. So if I go back to my data, okay, and I'm just going to 
copy a section here okay, and just put it at the bottom and paste and I'm going to change all of the dates here okay. um, I will just do a replace and anything that is 3 slash I'm going to make it be 4 slash okay. replace all okay. anything that's 2 slash I'm going to replace it with 5 slash I'm just making some made up data okay. and anything that is 1 slash I'm going to make it be 6 slash All right. so now we have some additional data to work with so if I go back to my pivot chart you can see that even though I have April, May and June figures for 2012 they're not showing here I only have January February and March for 2012 when I click on my pivot table table I have the pivot table tools available to me I'll go to the options okay. and I have if we click on our data source you'll see that it's all column C and D so it includes even those new values that I have I click OK and if I refresh the data you'll see that information came in for April and May and June of this year and you can see that oh my goodness things have really fallen off remember that's just bogus data okay. uh, if I click on the sheet where I copied this because I'm going to print this next to another chart you can see that this is still linked to the original data and it will update some people like to see their chart directly next to their pivot table so they know things are behaving the way they want but they want a second copy so this is how you can have an ongoing pivot chart ready at your fingertips uh, for data analysis